All right. We are officially live, guys. So, Ooh, woohoo! So, I want to start by thanking and welcoming Susanna from. She is the Good Vibrations Wellness Coach to the program. So, Welcome. so to start, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So let's just jump right into it. So, so tell us about yourself. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so I guess let's, let's be more specific. Are, are you are you from Hood River? No, I live in Mosier. Okay. Which is six miles east of Hood River. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I lived there for two years. Okay, and wh- wh- where did you come from before that? Corvallis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and did you did you no that's where um, the university? Yes. Okay, and you studied there? No, had nothing to do with the university. Okay, we just lived there because my husband got a job near there. Mm-hmm. So we lived there. We lived there for about six years. Before that, we lived in Bend. Mm-hmm. So we've kind of been around with our family. We had a couple kids, and mm-hmm. when um, COVID happened, we were able to work remotely, and so we were able to leave Corvallis, mm-hmm. and we moved to Mosier. Okay, mm-hmm. and why why Mosier? Um, we kind of stumbled upon it. I think people say about Mosier that Mosier chooses you, and like that definitely happened. We were just mm-hmm. sort of looking to relocate, and we found we got super lucky at the time there were many houses well like three mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe four houses for sale in Mosier and we were able to find a house and we it has an apartment on the bottom so we were able to use that as a as a rental mm-hmm. and for a long-term renter mm-hmm. and we just kind of fell in love with the town and decided to buy a house there and we Airbnb beat it for almost a year at first when we first bought it because we were not ready to leave Corvallis but then mm-hmm. COVID happened and um my husband and I were both able to work remotely. My business mm-hmm. had always been in person and my I've always had studios in my home, um, fitness studios. And because of COVID, I was able to like just go remote with all of my clients. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we could move and we moved several months into the pandemic and um, we've lived here for almost two years now. Cool, cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Sure. Mm-hmm. So I've been a personal trainer and nutrition coach for 15 years, maybe a little bit more than that now, Mm -hmm. but, and I've always had, I've always had a studio in my home because I was able to be at home with my kids and raise them while I was working. And I've had a studio, we've lived in probably like six or seven different homes that I've had different studios in like garages or spare rooms or family rooms or, and currently now I have a studio in my home and it's just my husband and I in our house now. So we have a lot more room, but um, I've had a wellness coaching business for 15 years where I've been a personal trainer. I coach my clients on healthy habits and sustainable, that's mm-hmm. the key word, super sustainable exercise and nutrition mm-hmm. and um, helping them figure out what works best in their lives with their schedules. Very, very adamant about being realistic about what fits into their lives with Mm -hmm. their current schedules and what they're willing to sort of change don't like to do too much at one time Mm -hmm. so i know all about that yeah Yeah. just keep it keep it really slow and steady habit building and Mm -hmm. i usually just i just walk with them while we kind of change health habits one by one and um i work on nutrition a lot too how did you fall into wanting to do that in that profession? I fell into it actually in a very unhealthy way. Um, after I had my second child, I I had never exercised intentionally a day in my life. But I was in my early, mid-20s when I had my kids. Pretty young. And I decided to get in shape after having my second kid. And I sort of taught myself how to exercise. I joined a gym. We were we lived in Southern California at the time, actually. But I joined a gym and kind of taught myself how to exercise. And then I joined a bigger gym, joined a Gold's Gym, where there were people, like beautiful people. And I had never seen people like this before, like women with muscles and hmm. just very fit people that were very mm-hmm. obsessed with <laughs> themselves and their bodies. And I became one of them. And um, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to be a personal trainer. That sounds very glamorous. And um, I got my certification about eight months later and started tra- We actually moved to Bend and I started training when we moved to Bend and I w- worked in a gym for less than a year. And then the gym business is super sketchy. So that went sideways real quick. And, um, hmm. 
I started working on my own. And I had a pretty unhealthy relationship with exercise and nutrition for quite a while in my beginning, my beginning years, which is very, very common for fitness professionals. I've discovered like most people that get into fitness have a real unhealthy relationship, very obsessive, very perfectionistic. Um, It's their Mm. entire life. It's the most important thing in their life. They're very evangelistic about it. I was totally the same way. And I sort of, I developed an eating disorder and I was like super unhealthy with my relationship with food and nutrition. food and exercise. Mm -hmm. And over the years, that was a long time ago, but over the years I've like pulled myself out of that and am in a much more balanced, stable place with nutrition. I'm 43 now too, or almost 43. So I'm have to be much more realistic with my, with my body. And so I work with a lot of people that are in their middle age Mm -hmm. years and need to be, you know, careful. We have to let these bodies have to last Mm -hmm. us like, 40, 50 more years. So, so quick, quick question. Yeah. So w- um, when you say s- sustainability, yeah. like what are some of the things that, that uh, somebody can do to make it more sustainable? Like the workout routines and everything. Go slower. Okay. Like, <laughs> Explain. Yeah. Don't yeah. jump into fitness programs that are like every day or hardcore every, every day or mm-hmm. just things that like, you can't continue for longer than, you know, a few weeks because most people jump Mm -hmm. into a fitness or a nutrition program that is not necessarily designed for them specifically. They're just designed to throw out there and sell. Mm -hmm. And, um, people just go in without any education, without any training. They just start doing the workouts often. They'll follow the videos or whatever, and then Mm -hmm. get injured or be so sore they can barely move or like get burned out real quick. So mm-hmm. I, I have to actually, a lot of my clients, I have to like really pull them back and slow them down because they, they feel like just our culture and our society makes us feel like we should always be doing more. We should always be doing more. You can rest when you're dead, like kind of this hardcore mentality that a lot of people right. succumb to. I think it's just like this natural mm-hmm. feeling that we all have is like we should be doing more. Yeah. And um, in the fitness industry kind of. Yeah promotes yes, that totally. you know, a bit of like you and, can always lift yeah. more weight or yeah. you can run yeah yeah it, especially social media you know like like you can't help but like like especially when you're flipping through like like instagram will like th- start throwing these people that are just supposedly crazy workouts yeah yes. supposedly crushing it like yes, every day crushing it right and that makes you feel like it makes you feel like that's what you need to do and if you don't you're you're you're, you're lazy you're a failure yeah you're a failure Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love to debunk because Mm -hmm. it's not sustainable. It's like you, Mm -hmm. I mean, there are those people that their bodies somehow don't fall apart. There's a very, there's very few people whose bodies don't fall apart, but most people, if they're not really, um, reasonable and realistic and spend time stretching and mobilizing and making sure that their tissues are really healthy and making sure their Mm -hmm. ligaments and tendons are in good shape to take on an increased load which people don't even think Mm -hmm. about they just like start Mm -hmm. doing the workouts and they're like this is great and then something snaps at some point in time they will pull a muscle they'll tear a muscle they'll tear a ligament like it's yeah i as um someone that lost like 70 80 pounds in the past few years Mm -hmm. when people are like how did you do it i tell them basically what you just said you know you start with small baby steps like i started by walking awesome and mm-hmm. then i would just like walk on a flat surface Great. and then i would add a little uphill and then i would walk more oh and it was gosh. like a long time before i was like mm-hmm. okay i conquered that now i'm ready to add one more thing let's add some weights did you have anybody like to feed like to feedback with this because mm-hmm. that's that's awesome that you were able to do that yourself and not yeah, it was it was all on my own. That's great. Until whenever I moved to Hood River, I moved here two years mm-hmm. ago too. Um, I moved here when COVID started yeah. and didn't have anything to do, so I joined a gym eventually, and mm-hmm. then got like you were saying, a Super fanatic, into it. Yeah. a fanatic about. <laughs> I got so buff, I was so ripped. I have a friend who's a like mm. world ranked power lifter, wow. and he made me a free training program, which cool. I became obsessed with. Uh huh. And, like, getting down to a certain weight and, like, my body would not get to the weight that he wanted me to be. And I got obsessed with food. And 
Um, it wasn't until I took a trip where I kind of reeled back. back and I was like, wow, I can't even enjoy this vacation because I'm thinking about how I'm missing my training plan. I was like, that's really unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad you noticed that, though, before you got further into it. Yeah. Hmm. Some people don't. No. What would uh, be your advice for someone who's kind of in that same boat? I don't know, because I feel like a lot of it, you just have to sort of come to that conclusion on your own. I don't. I mean, I wouldn't have listened to anyone in that place. There's no mm-hmm. way. I actually had a good friend I was per- like good, good friends with. She had 15 years of experience when I was brand new, and she tried to tell me that I was going to injure myself, and I would not listen to her. And she was totally right. I was crippled for a while. I like could be- I was... I worked myself into a place where my muscles were so tight I could barely walk because I didn't ever, like, stretch or mobilize or, like, spend the time recovering. I just did hardcore all the time. Hmm. And she told me that I was going to injure myself, and I would not listen. Like, no, I'm too strong. Yeah, totally. No, a lot of pride was... (laughs) There was a lot of pride at that point in time. Now, is, that, is, it, is that what you're talking about when you say sustainability? Is, is uh, like, you help people. You, like, you, you don't encourage them to go out and just, like, you know, quote, unquote, crush it. No. Every no day. It. No crushing Like, you, <laughs> you, you build in stretching. Yes. And, and like. Yes. And um, like when you say sustainability, because I'm kind of thinking, like, the the ideal workout plan would be something that you can do well into your 40s and 50s and and beyond absolutely right? and, yes so i mean yeah. things obviously change when you're younger you can technically most likely do a little more and then you might reel back some of the weights as you get older and your joints start to get a little cranky or you might have like i have pretty severe knee issues so i have to really pace myself so i'm really good mm-hmm. at helping people like understand that pacing themselves helps them be active much longer than if you get injured and then you're out and this, mm-hmm. is, this is what, like, actually one of the main, my main focuses in my coaching is to get people through a really tough period. Because most people, when they start coaching with me or anyone probably, at the beginning of the program, it's very exciting. And it's like, oh, I can do this. And I feel so much better. And, like, I have, mm-hmm. like, four weeks under my belt of being super consistent. And then they're, like, someone, you know, gets really sick. Or I had a client whose husband, like, blew his knee out completely total surprise injury needed surgery and she was like basically had to just take care of him only for like six weeks Mm -hmm. had to drive him everywhere he had no he was totally dependent on her she had to Mm -hmm. stop going to the gym she had to stop doing everything she was doing because she had zero time and my whole thing is to get people through those periods of time the injuries the death in the family the you know crises (laughs) the COVID, all of the things that pop up in our lives that like never, ever stop popping up. They never stop popping up, but get people through them like the best they can, like during that tough period and then get right back on track as soon as things settle. And that's, that's really important because, because, um, like the, like the, like the emotional energy that you need to do like a workout and that like the men, like your mental state has to like really be there. Mental health. Do you touch on mental health? Oh yeah, or, like, totally. Tons of self-care. Tons of, uh-huh. like... No, what do you mean by self-care? Like, what we're doing... Like, I, 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 I look at self-care as, like, taking care of our future selves. Like, what would our future self want us to be doing currently to mm-hmm. put us in the best position as we age? Mm-hmm. And, like, that probably falls on deaf ears for, like, younger people because they're like, I'm not, you know, thinking about that. But, like, in my right. 40s, I'm thinking about my 80s. Like, I want to be yeah. able to move at least hopefully close to as well as I can right yeah. now. So I want to do the things that, like, keep me as mobile as I can possibly be, you know, right, within right, our control. Right. We can't control everything, obviously. But... Basically the opposite of what, uh, there was an episode of uh, The Simpsons where Homer, I think he, I think he ate, like, a pizza or a donut or something. And, you know, the, the, the first thing he said after was, like, take that future self. Yeah. <laughs> the, the opposite of that. The opposite, the complete <laughs> opposite of that. Yeah. And so back to the sustainability. I just, I just, it just popped in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> back to being sustainable about it. Like I, I want people to be able to start habits now and like continue what they're doing, building on it in whatever way is reasonable for them. Like we don't always have to lift more, lift more, lift more. Like that's not generally what the general population mm-hmm. needs. We just need to be able to be active, keep the muscle we have ideally because we lose muscle as we get older. So it's really important to keep the muscle that we have and be
be as strong as we can realistically without kind of going into the powerlifting world. I mean, that's fine, but it's also mm-hmm. just not for most people. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. a sustainable lifestyle. But be as strong as we can as we get older so that we're in the best shape or in the best, um, put us, puts us in the best position as we age, mm-hmm. as our joints start to, you know, get cranky and mm-hmm. just have as much muscle as we can to hold us up and also just be as mobile as possible, as agile. We can catch ourselves if we're going to trip mm-hmm. and just kind of like, this is all like, you know, future stuff. But that's what I'm talking about self care. I talk about self care a lot is like taking care of our future selves, eating things now. That will make us feel good tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, like the drinking, like not drinking so much that we feel terrible tomorrow. Like that's a big piece of it too. Like oh, mm-hmm. absolutely, yeah, yeah. I um, that was how I got into my fitness journey. Was I got sober mm-hmm. and figured if I you know would if I was changing one big thing, then I might as well change all you know the weight I had gained while depressed too. So kind of like did it all at once. Love that. Um, but like we were saying, like one baby step at a time to make sure that everything was sustainable. Yep. Has to be totally, or it's just a big, huge disappointment when you kind of fall off. And and that's, that's really difficult, especially in Hood River, because you have so many places to, to drink. I know. So, so, Mm -hmm. uh, so do you have any tips for, for people that are looking to, um, perhaps like, you know, like how, how do you help people kind of overcome that temptation? Like, like if, 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 if I was to say, well, like, yeah, like I would love to get healthy, but my whole social life revolves around going out and, yeah and like everyone wants to drink and then there's I like know. so much and then everyone, every, usually what'll happen mm-hmm. is everyone wants you to drink. Like, you're not just going to have a water, are you? Yeah. Right. So, so and what, what would late night food and right. Right. So, so what would be your sort of, um, do you have any tips for that? I think so first of all, like I, I talk to my, I, I find it important to keep the conversation going. I find it important mm-hmm. for people to just be conscious of their habits because a lot of people are just not paying attention to what they're doing and they're not really paying attention to how they feel. Mm-hmm. Um, things like, like drinking, like drinking habitually and like, you know, every weekend or you know, binge drinking or whatever. A lot of people aren't really paying attention to how it makes them feel. I don't think. I think they're Mm -hmm. pretty much just kind of autopiloting it and they just, you know, have a drink and then just keep going. Mm -hmm. So when I first start the conversation with my clients, we talk about um, just being aware and like checking in with themselves. Like if I have this drink, is it going to increase my enjoyment of this evening? Like just checking in. So basically just kind of starting the conversation with yourself, just kind of checking in like, how, how do I feel right now? Do I need another drink right now? maybe I should have a glass of water in between and just kind of to slow it down a little Mm -hmm. bit instead of just the automatic, like, Oh, this one's gone. Just drink the next one. Just slowing, slowing down the response time just a little bit and just being a little bit more aware of your, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe also asking yourself, why do I feel like I need another one? Like, absolutely. Mm. Is it because like I want to have a fun, enjoyable evening and I haven't had one of those in a long time. And this is a special treat. Or do you want the other one because you're feeling anxious Mm -hmm. or like you can't have fun without it or like kind of identifying and recognizing the reasons why you do the things that you do and doing that self exploration as to why am I like that? And that's really interesting where psychology comes into Mm -hmm. play in, in like health and wellness because, um, yeah, you can totally get into this situation where like, you know, some people are like, well, I've had a really, really great day, so so I deserve a beer, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, if or they the have opposite. a... Or it's, like, the opposite. Mm-hmm. So, basically, no matter what happens, like, like, like it, it all goes down to, like, like either either binge eating or... Mm-hmm. or so, so, that's where, yeah, that's really important where psychology comes into play. Um, hence the reason why I think it's... That's really... It's... Sometimes it is necessary <laughs> to have somebody you know, such as a coach to just be there from the outside and say, Hey, look, like, cause you need that person from the outside to tell yes. you that like, look from the outside, looking in, this is what you're doing. Like this is this, um, but getting back to what you were saying, Samantha, um, yeah, that's, that's a powerful thing to, to ask. Like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. Like why, 
you know, because, you know, the end result is like, you know, two, three different people could be eating like that, that chocolate cake that they shouldn't probably shouldn't be late at night. But the mental reasons are all different. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. And if you can be present and have it with joy and mm-hmm. like really be present with your decision, mm-hmm. that's a lot different than checking out and numbing out and like just, mm-hmm. you know, autopilot on drinks in or, you know, food in. And it's hard to not be on autopilot with, with food after several drinks. But just in the first place just kind of like asking asking yourself questions so so where like when some when somebody hires let's let's say they hire you as their Mm -hmm. their wellness coach Mm -hmm. fitness and wellness coach like so where where do you begin do you do you begin with like an assessment of their psychological like so like where are you at well i'm not like i'm not a trained psychologist so i start with a complimentary um consultation Mm -hmm. and we just kind of chat about all the things and just kind of figure out like what, what they're looking for, how I can help, if we're a good fit. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm very, I, every one of my clients is working on something slightly different. I'm very individualized. Some people I work with just nutrition. Some people I, I have a, a coach through a training platform online. And so I program their workouts and they get an email every morning saying like, this is your workout for today. And it has mm-hmm. like demo videos and um, that I've made and just instructions on the workout and most of my clients work out in their homes. And so Mm -hmm. I help them set up like a good home fitness situation, like Mm -hmm. whether they're in their own, like if they have a room they can set aside for their workouts or just a space. Um, I help them kind of figure out what equipment they have they could get. Um, I can work with anything I work with. I often will go, like if someone's local enough, like I kind of travel around Oregon a lot. Um, I'll go to their house and kind of see what, see what, what, they have. what we can use stairs or, you know, a counter or whatever. Um, and if people are local here, I do go to their houses to work with them if they, if they want that. Mm-hmm. So I really like to see like what their space feels like and looks like if possible, or have them give me a little tour yeah, yeah. so I can just kind of see like so, what their space feels like. Quick question, because mm-hmm. I'm trying to place myself in the questions that I would ask. So, yeah, yeah. So how, how would you deal with, um, let's say, for example, boredom? Like, so it's like, well, yeah, I could do push-ups, but... But I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> like, it's it gets back to that, like, psychology and mental mm-hmm. thing. It's just yeah. like, I don't know, like, like I could do push like, um, but, like, how do you make well, it fun in a way? So I wanted to bring this up when it came to sustainability is um, comes down to finding something that you enjoy doing. Yeah, totally. Like for me for a while, I was super into the gym, but Mm -hmm. for me that was not, became not sustainable because I have a lot of different interests and it's like, okay, well, if you aren't feeling being in the gym anymore, that's okay. We can like, I started climbing and rollerblading and I realized Mm -hmm. I like to be outside more. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. So it's Mm -hmm. like finding things that can help you. Yeah stay interested for a yes, long time for sure you don't I, need to keep doing like no, a program no, for no, you no, if totally it's not, not working for totally you you know not. yeah no, and yeah. i don't force anything on anyone i but, and that's part of the the consultation call too is like what do you like doing like can we start mm-hmm. i really 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 encourage everyone to walk as much as possible like mm-hmm. starting with that a lot of people don't don't i feel i think they feel like it's not doing anything but walking is yep. like one of the best mental health things it is our human natural human movement our dna expects us to walk our ancestors walked a lot a lot more than we walk so i really encourage people Mm -hmm. to walk and start there and i love encouraging people to find podcasts or audiobooks to listen to while they walk because it's a great opportunity to learn or entertain yourself or whatever and kind of like Mm -hmm. lure yourself out the door with like this carrot of like something cool to listen to i love i love podcasts i listen to podcasts all the time and so i love you know listening to them when I walk. I don't listen to them any other time. Um, But walking is like the first thing I really try to get people on board with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully walking outside, treadmills kind of kill your soul sometimes. So walking Mm -hmm. outside if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A a good time to get into audiobooks too. Totally. Audiobooks. I like, I'm an audiobook junkie. Yeah. And audiobooks, podcasts, listen to music. Um, I love walking by the river here. Yeah. There's always that. I, I love feeling the wind. I don't know why it just, it just helps wake wake me up yeah. when you just outside and you feel the wind. Uh, the other nice thing about walking is is um, 
Like, if you want to mix it up, you can go to the gym and put on a video and just walk. You totally can do that. You too. can watch Netflix you can while you walk. Like, while walking, walking. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree. Like, for me, walking has been like the base. Good. Like, if it should cause, be. Because even if you don't have the energy to go do push ups mm-hmm. or weights or something, mm-hmm. like, you can always go walk. Yep. Totally. Right? Yeah. And getting outside so, always makes you feel better. You can, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. I think it's, I think it's really essential for like mental health too and especially here in the gorge like just get out and like you feel the wind and you you look at the mountains and the river and it just brings you back to that sort of like that natural state that we were supposed to live you know just walking outside in nature and like i'm a big believer in that there's i think the gym has its place but Mm -hmm. you know for me i think like maybe like two three days in the gym and two three days outside yeah like like you get that good mix yeah. of um like it, so so that you're never i guess bored right totally right yes. so um, mixing yeah. it up is big i don't and you asked about boredom earlier and like some people enjoy working on strength and getting stronger and some people don't and that's totally fine i just yeah yeah want to help facilitate a love for some sort of movement because it always makes you feel better it always does mm-hmm. yeah and especially getting outside like that's the main thing i encourage people to do is get outside yeah, I mean, we live in the perfect place for it. Yes, it's super. Totally. Super lucky. Totally. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've seen bumper stickers that says, the gorge is my gym. Yeah, I like right? those. I almost got one once. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It was think... mine whenever I first moved here. Yeah. Like, was um... that your bumper sticker? No, I no, should but, get but that, that was, one, though. But that was your, 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 your motto. Yeah, well, I moved basically. here without a car. And, like, whenever I started my fitness journey, I was living outside Yellowstone for the winter, which oh. gets... Um, a lot of snow like 15 inches mm-hmm. every few days so um right now ne- i like lived right next to where i worked and where i worked was a restaurant bar and a gym very oh. weird combination all in the same building. Uh, all in the same, same building <laughs> very small town <laughs> yeah and so i would like just go into the gym and at first i would walk on the treadmill like no one went to this gym it was just me Go to yourself yeah and i would <laughs> put on the tv play whatever i want and that was like like we were saying, to find an initial motivator. Uh-huh. If, yeah, you need to put on a Netflix show you're watching to, like, get you to move. You know, whatever yeah. it is. But eventually, with the boredom, you will get bored. But that's not, like, an indication to stop. No. It's to mm-hmm. change your routine and find something different or, like, up at a notch. So then I would start walking outside in the snow. I would just, like, keep walking and walking. And it was so peaceful. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, boredom doesn't mean to, like, quit. It's, like, change up your routine. Find something different that you can do. I actually yeah. saw, this totally speaks to this, I saw this um, concept today, or this, I was reading something, I don't know, was somebody, somebody I follow. She's talking, she's another fitness coach, and she was talking about how the first period, there's, like, three periods of time in a fitness journey. This actually probably translates to anything. The first period of time, you're super excited, you're motivated, it's exciting, keeps you interested, keeps you engaged. Then there's this middle period where the newness is sort of over, and now it's boring. And you got to kind of push through that phase to get to the place where you feel really good, and you're getting benefits from your habits that you've built Mm -hmm. enough to keep you motivated but there is that middle of the middle of the time Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think i think the fitness industry has been really really bad about like pushing on people the idea that you're gonna you're gonna look like a model within three months yeah i know it's you know like (laughs) yeah it it just oh sorry um it's just um, it's really damaging. like your body does not adapt that you know these no. like you, i'm sure you guys have seen those like before and after within like three months of like oh, yeah. you, using this using these like i don't know fill in whatever pills right and it's funny because if you like i always see those on instagram and then if you go and like read the comments because i'm always like obviously not you know yeah. and then you click on the comments and like the person whose actual picture it was is like, please stop using my photos oh my really? to promote this. This took me like a year or two or five because wow. that's realistic. So it's just a uh, prime example of how to sell things to people mm-hmm. or diet fads and exercise equipment that's weird or I don't know. You know, people will flip it to make whatever narrative. They're like, oh, in three months you can do this. That's where the sustainability piece comes in is because you actually can 
make pretty big changes in a short period of time, but there, mm-hmm. there's no sustainability to it because right. you're like following no. a strict program or something that is not you. That's what I, my, one of my other big principles is I take my clients preferences into consideration with everything. I don't like. Just... Sorry, that's the truck outside. Wow. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just prescribe things because they have to be in, super engaged and into it. They have to like the food they're eating. They have to, like the exercises they're doing. I'm like, I'm not married to anything. If you hate this, like, you don't have to do okay, it at so, all. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me throw you questions that I would ask. Okay. So how do you feel about, uh, let's say, keto, intermittent fasting? Let's, 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 let's start. Um, or so, so if somebody said, like, well, yeah, I, I'm just, like, so confused. I, I hear, you know, some people have success with keto. I've tried, I personally have tried, like, let's say, for example, cut cut the carbs Mm -hmm. like i feel i just feel absolutely horrible Mm -hmm. um it semi works for me but like it um i just don't know but it's not sustainable it's yeah that's why i like the sustainability thing because like i love to just get up and walk but I, i sometimes i don't enjoy the walk as much if i if i'm trying like you know low carbs or keto no because you have no energy (laughs) what's that because you have no energy yeah basically yeah 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 um so i so what would you... And they all... It, I think it makes you depressed, too, to not have carbs in your system. It actually does. It yeah, kind of totally. messes with my mood. Yeah. I, can't, I can't concentrate. Yeah. But yet everybody, like, in this day and age is pushing keto and low carbs. And, yeah. And I like, actually don't subscribe to that at all. You don't? No. I actually... I personally follow a mostly plant-based diet. Okay. Um, which is very high carb. Like, really high carb. Because okay. almost all plant-based... All, almost all plants then, are just all carbohydrates. But then a plant-based diet is going to have a lot of those carbs are going to be fiber. Yeah, correct? tons. Tons of yes. tons of fiber. Tons so, of it, yeah. Yeah, so probably it's not going to spike your blood sugar no. as much as like, you know, just like yes. a refined carbohydrate. Right. So Yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of legumes and a lot of whole grains are kind of like the base of my nutrition. Uh-huh. And a lot of fiber and a lot of protein in those yeah. things. So they keep my blood sugar stable. Now, are you are you like vegan vegetarian or No, I don't actually label myself with anything. I do eat meat occasionally. I just sort of took it on as a challenge a few years ago and I really enjoy it. Like I really really like eating this way. I feel really yeah. good. I have good energy. I haven't lost any muscle. And I wanted to see like if I could stay stay fit. And keep the muscle I had and just lower my animal protein intake. So okay. it's just kind of an experiment. And I'm not, like, I don't care what other people do at all. Like, all if, right. you, if you eat animal protein, that is great. I'm actually coming up with a really awesome meal template program to cater to both of those things for helping people kind of mm-hmm. figure out their weekly meals mm-hmm. in a hopefully really sustainable and um, simple way. <laughs> and when you say, um, like, a plan, like... Uh, so, so do you have like local recipes, recipes that you can actually make here in Hood River? Is that sort oh, of like, with like, local food? Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, I not with... not even just like farmers market. I'm talking like whatever's available at Safeway. Oh yeah, because and yeah. I, I say that because like sometimes the the frustration that I I have with like seeing plans online and stuff is like sometimes they have ingredients that are just not like like available. Like just you can't just go down to Safeway and and buy it and. There's there's some other issues too, but like, um, yeah, I, I find that like very important is like localized, yes. sort of like meal accessibility, plans. yeah, accessibility, yeah, and sure. like, and then getting back to what you thought sustainability. So, um, yeah, but yeah, that, but that's all stuff that you do too. Yeah, okay. yes, absolutely. I try to make everything as like easy as possible. Like try to take, um, I call them like right. mental barriers or something. Take all the barriers down. <laughs> Try to like just make things as simple as possible for people to implement just like one small thing into their life at a time mm-hmm. and including food. Mm-hmm. Food has to be as simple as possible. I feel like it's always, it's always a challenge to figure out like the what's for dinner question. It always feels like a big, it is, it's a, yeah. So that's what I, that's what I've been trying to solve for years. And I feel like I've finally kind of come up with a, with a kind of a template plan. So I've always okay. wanted to do like templates. I don't want to give recipes. I want to do templates so people can kind of pick and choose and mix and match. Yeah. That's so, nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on that one. Yeah, I find I still kind of eat the very simple way that I used to mm-hmm. whenever I'm cooking for myself. It can be hard to get out of. It's like meat, cheese, veggies. Yeah. Very simple. And, and most that was people how do I eat the same things all the time. And so kind mm-hmm. of capitalizing I, on I that. I can't. I can't. I need a lot of variability. You do? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Like I've 
I've tried like because I've looked at stuff online like you know like like um like chicken breast every night I just can't do oh, it no. like, like no. chicken breast and green beans and and like I, I did that for a while on my did. training plan he made a diet for oh. me and it uh yeah I got pretty depressed after a while yes I totally because was... there was no carbs yeah well, I was to the point where like <laughs> the biggest excitement of my diet was getting different kinds of mustard like fancy no, mustard. I did that to myself. Wow. Yeah. Also for yeah. Uh, many years. Hey, I totally but that's, did that to myself. But, but that's but that's not a knock on those people that can actually do it. Like I'm I'm really in awe of people that can actually go through that and like and not uh, be let's say be a power lifter that on chicken breast and like just being wowed by two different types of mustard. Yeah. Like it just. Uh, the thing is that it's not sustainable. Like yeah. knowing people in the world, they have a heavy binge cycle. Yes. Like afterwards, yes. yes, totally. That's totally me too. Yeah, so, yeah. So heavy like, binge cycle. so You're if you right, put me, tolerant. if you put me on, if you put me on a diet of like, yeah, chicken, chicken breast, and like just like veggies, like I'm gonna binge on Saturday night. Like, uh, of no course tomorrow. you are. I'm gonna of go to Double Mountain. Are. I'm gonna go to Double Mountain and order my usual olives and sausage. With Pizza. extra, uh, yeah, Delicious. with extra, extra cheese. My favorite is the truffle shovel. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's my favorite too. <laughs> oh my <God>. So good. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I. Okay, um, if I were working, like, just with, for example, if you I were can working hear what with I'm, you, yeah, I would find out what your preferences are, and mm-hmm. then, like, build off of that. I'd find right. out like what you, what you current, like, what you like, what you're currently doing. And slowly build into that. Like, maybe let's add a salad every week or every day or whatever. Like, just mm-hmm. add, like, you know, one thing at a time. Right. And slowly start to maybe lose some things and add some things. But I usually like to add things first. Generally, mm-hmm. vegetables and more fiber. But. So so how do you make them? Hey, um, so do you add, a, like, so is, would somebody be eating the same vegetables every night? No. No. I don't make okay. meal plans either. I do not tell people what to eat at all. I just try to help them, like, figure out what things make them feel good. Because people know what makes them feel good. Mm-hmm. They're choosing foods that taste good. <laughs> but they know that those things don't make them feel good most of the time. Mm-hmm. Like, people know what makes them feel good. How um, do you handle... Because some nights, it's part of the sustainability as well, right? You have a night where you're like... Pancakes had a really rough day like i want my comfort meal like right now my roommate's got pizza at home and i've had it a lot this week but you know it's okay you have weeks like that but how do you deal with like a client who's in the middle of having trying weeks to change? like that all the time <laughs> yeah or like i guess maybe even one night or two where they feel shame of like not having chose what did you know was best for them right okay i really love to look at things as like kind of 80 80- 80% and 20%. So if you're looking at like 21-ish meals throughout the week, that gives you wiggle room on like three wheel, three meals to like maybe have something. I call it like fun food. I don't usually mm-hmm. use the word like treat or cheat. I like the word like kind of just like fun food as opposed to something that's more nutrient dense and more mm-hmm. nourishing. Mm-hmm. So if you're keeping your nutrition mostly nutrient dense and nourishing most of the time, paying attention to protein and fiber being kind of like the mainstays of your 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 nutrition that leaves a lot of room for other things. It leaves a lot of room mm-hmm. for enjoyment. It leaves a lot of room like even in the meal itself if you're kind of making sure you have the protein and the fiber, the other stuff is kind of like I don't know. It falls into place. I feel like it falls into place. And like mm-hmm. we, I mean I talk about this in more detail with my clients. But um I feel like a couple meals a week having more fun foods is totally fine. And I think after having, I did the binge and deprive cycle for so uh-huh. many years, so many years, <laughs> um, I feel like the fun foods have to have a place. And really working with people on sort of taking that stigma down uh-huh. about the, with the guilt and everything. Because I guilted myself and the guilt does not work. Like it doesn't work at all. We think it works as like motivation and it certainly has no place in... Uh-huh in our motivation it's like very slight 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 variation on that is is um something that has kind of somewhat worked for me Mm -hmm. is like so for example like i i love chocolate cake me too 
right? Chocolate Love cake. <laughs> but <laughs> my favorite. my workaround for that is like instead of having like an entire slice, mm-hmm. you know, like they like they have this um this like slice of chocolate cake at Safeway that I'm just like just like it's I'm really addicted. Good. Yeah, I'm addicted to it. Yeah. Um, what I'll do is I'll just have like let's say a spoonful. Like before I go to bed. That's pretty good self control, right? Like <laughs> just, no, and and yeah. and like, um, I think ten minutes later, if I'm still feeling, you still want like some, I, like like I still want some more, I'll take another spoonful, and like sometimes, sometimes that's all. That's all I need. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So uh, um, on that note, I'll tell you. Um, I guess you can say this is a little hack just for myself. First time I'm telling everybody. Nice. So, so that yeah, dr- drum roll. The, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, wasn't, <laughs> All right. I, was, I, I wasn't expecting this that. Be an actual <laughs> drum roll. But like, so I'll, I'll tell you my my little hack for um, like you know people that want that that sugar in coffee oh. is. So what I'll do is I'll keep the one or two packets of sugar on the side. I'll drink 80, 90 percent of the coffee. So so instead of like putting one packet of sugar for the entire coffee, mm-hmm. like you kind of treat yourself at the very end, like when it's like only like <laughs> like, only like one that. super sugar. Basically, so and so it, so because if you put one packet of sugar in the whole coffee, you can't you even really taste tell, it. You can't even tell it's in there. You can't even tell this like sweetened. So so in order to trick your brain, like I'll, I've sometimes I'll drink the entire coffee except for like a little small bit, and then you put. Then you put that little bound of sugar in there, and then it's like super sweet, and then it satisfies that that urge to like drink, hmm. and I, you, and then at the end of the day, you haven't had that much sugar. Yeah, right, because you you had this like super sweet shot of like just like like you know a little bit of coffee. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, it's just like something that has actually worked in the past for myself. Cool. Like it's a little hack that so so instead of like you know putting five packs of sugar right in your coffee to make it yeah. sweet. You, it's um you treat yourself at the end of your coffee. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I <laughs> I can see how that would work for you. I mean, I feel like an important part of making huge life changes is not like tricking your brain, but almost in a way like so I'm big on like neuroplasticity and how mm. whenever like by choosing to do something over and over, you're actually rewiring your brain in the way that mm-hmm. it, you know, functions mm-hmm. and that's how we build habits. Um, and if, you know, doing that with your coffee, it's a hack for you that helps. Like, I yeah. feel like we all need to find yeah. our well, like, own that it, work for us. So, so the other, the other thought that I've had before, which I mean, I, I think it, I think it's something that they need to look at is like, so on some days you feel more disciplined than others. For sure. Right. For on a sure. day. So, so that, so like, if you're feeling super disciplined, you should just have no no sugar. No hacks. No hacks. <laughs> no sugar. But but there's but there's days when yeah. it's just like yeah, you choose For sure. these little hacks work if it if it keeps you from binging. I like that. Right? Yep. So so you have an answer for it's like you know, like um you know like salesmen. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what you tell a really good salesman, he has an answer for. That's true. Right? Or he or she. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like so so you it's like um, having all these like little tools in your toolbox, like no matter what life throws at you, right? You have you're ready. I like that. That's, right. That's yeah. that's good. And you're right. Like some days you're an emotional wreck. Yeah. Because of yeah. whatever. Also, so, some days your blood sugar is totally out of whack. Huh. And that's what causes more sugar cravings more on some cravings. days than other days. Like if you start right, your right. day. With just some sugar, you're going to be craving sugar all day long. If you start your day with some solid protein and like uh-huh. some fiber, you're going to have a much more stable blood, blood sugar. sugar response all mm-hmm. day long. Also, right. the other, other thing I've really found is hydration is a huge piece of this. Like if you are not very hydrated, which most people are walking around dehydrated all the time, extra hydration makes your willpower is better. Your mood is better. Your energy is way up. Mm-hmm. But trying to stay hydrated is mm-hmm. <laughs> very challenging. Oh yeah, especially yeah. like day after day after day. Like I usually do pretty good for a couple of days, and then I like forget all about it. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if people have a hard time drinking water, they make the little like no sugar electrolyte packets mm-hmm. now. Um, I like the taste of water, and I've been using them mm-hmm. <clears throat> lately. It can help us mix it up. A yeah, bit. especially like today with how hot it 
yeah. as well. Oh, like yeah. Getting those yeah. extra electrolytes in yeah. um, can be really important. Which, by the way, I've, I've often prescribed to people um, when, when they're having a headache. Mm-hmm. My Something that works a lot of the time for me is um, I will go down to um, the local... Um, any any of the Mexican restaurants, and I'll get um, the chicken soup because mm-hmm. it has a lot of salt and, and 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 I'll drink like a Gatorade because that also has electrolytes, and usually that'll cure my headache. Oh, well, because because you're I think what it, what happens is like your body then like retains so much water that because a lot of the times I think you, uh, headaches are like the product of, of dehydration. Like dehydration. They are, yeah, right? mm-hmm. generally. So, yeah, but no, that's. Um, now what uh a, what's your favorite uh local recipe with vegetables? I'm I'm very curious on that cuz cuz I've been trying to get more vegetables into my diet. What would you say is Um well my favorite thing to use are I get salad greens and kale from the farmers market a lot and I make a lot of things with those. Mm-hmm. But I usually throw things on top of a big pile of green stuff in general so that's a big piece of it i'm also really big on um making farro do you know what farro is no do you know what farro is mm-hmm. it's like the best has the best texture it's like a, it's like a very chewy grain sort of like rice sort of like barley mm-hmm. but like chewier firmer ancient grain it's an ancient grain yes very fancy <laughs> and i like making vegetable salads with that in yeah. there like or like making a farro salad with like a bunch of vegetables in it yeah so you can put a bunch of vegetables in it and not really know that you're eating a bunch of vegetables right in the winter yeah. i feel like putting a bunch of vegetables in soup or a lot of kale or green stuff spinach in soup you can kind of hide it and not even taste it but that's not that's not now it's not when it's 100 degrees outside i've tr- i've tr- i myself have tried kale i'm not i have to say i'm not like a huge fan oh no most people aren't you have to but, but i hear a lot about it though you can Prepare it in ways that make it more fun to eat. Uh-huh. You can I do this um, thing called massaging, where you like cut it all up and you put it in a bowl and you like drizzle a little oil and some salt and lemon mm-hmm. over it, mm-hmm. and then you like work it with your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, you massage it basically, and you just kind of like squish it around for a little while, and it breaks down the fibers, and the acid helps helps it sort of break down and make it a little softer and the salt and the acid and the oil give it mm-hmm. like a more pleasant flavor and kind of cut out that like green, that deep green abrasiveness. That, that reminds me, I, I tried a new recipe this past week and it came out really, really good. Um, I, so basically you take the majority, you know, those like little tubs of um, spinach mm-hmm. at, at the, at the either Safeway yep. or Rosa. So you, so you boil, you boil like the majority of that. And then you you replace the hot water with cold water, and then you you swish it around, basically clean the spinach in a way. You take it all, and then you you ball it up, and then you you squish the water out, mm-hmm. but not not so hard. No, you don't squish it so hard that it compacts it. You just and then you you chop that up, and um, you put green onions and chop up green onions and garlic, sesame oil, and soy sauce. And oh. and I use the soy sauce from the local fish market. It's like, it's like a whiskey. The, the flask. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a really soy fancy yeah. soy sauce along along with um, yeah, toasted sesame oil and sesame seeds. This is like a Korean dish, basically. Yeah. And Are you, you sautéing it? No, you're not sautéing. No. You just basically boil it and then and then like mix it all together. Y- yeah, and then you mix in the um, green onions and garlic and in the two ingredients, and then it. So you're basically, you're getting like a ton of spinach. And this like recipe was like, came out really, really good. And if I can do it, trust me, anyone can do yeah, it. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, so if, if anybody is listening, look up, um, I think it's like a Korean, like, I think if you type in Korean spinach recipe, I definitely recommend that because it's super easy. And like, if you eat that before a meal, like it, you, you don't need as, I I didn't need as much. Other like, food other food yeah. because you ate so much spinach also little glucose blood glucose hack blood sugar hack if you uh-huh. have vegetables before a meal it slows, slows the slows the glucose spike i've i've heard about that so so what have you heard anything about cinnamon so i've heard cinnamon lowers yeah i've blood. heard that too i don't know i don't i don't know that experientially but yeah. i have heard that yes okay. hmm. well that's the thing about 
starting to cook yourself healthy meals that yes. taste good and that yes. you enjoy. Uh, they don't have to be like super elaborate, nope. but if it's super tasty, then your likelihood to have a binge cycle goes down mm-hmm. for significantly. Sure. Yeah, for because sure. you don't feel like you're depriving yourself. Yep. Right. But you're still eating healthy, you and know? you figure right. out ways to make your food taste super good. That's I like my one of my other things that I'm really big on is satisfaction. Like you have to be satisfied with your meals. You can't just eat like chicken breast and green beans and expect to be satisfied with like you know mm-hmm. new, new mustard every week. Yeah. It has mm-hmm. to be satisfying, and that's why I'm really big on helping people figure out like textures. Like farro mm-hmm. has the best texture in a salad, and like figuring out other ways to work texture and satisfaction into their meals. So that they mm-hmm. feel satiated and they are like their blood sugar is stable and they feel good for several hours. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, again, not sustainable. So satisfaction okay. is huge. Yeah. No, no, and just like what you're saying, satis- I mean, um, sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really, really important to be able to, because cause you, you want to coach people on how to be healthy, like, um, in 10 years and 20 years, yes, right? And for sure. And at the yes. very least, like start building a base mm-hmm. from which to go from. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yep. So. Mm. Um, oh, I have one. Ooh, so finding like, you know, everyone has a sweet tooth. And I feel like whenever people are going into, you know, trying to change their diet, they feel like they're going to have to give that up in the process. And I feel like finding healthy workarounds to satisfy that. I know really helped me like maintain what I was doing mm-hmm. and sustain it. Mm-hmm. Um, I substituted like ice cream for I would get whipped cream, which like, or the light whipped cream or mm-hmm. sugar free, and then mix like powdered peanut butter oh. in with a little bit, <laughs> and yeah. maybe some like sugar free chocolate chips or like a jam, yeah. and that would be like my dessert, and I didn't feel like I was depriving right. myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. finding a healthy, easy alternative to, like, a whole chocolate cake or pie or <laughs> ice cream all the time. It's, like, finding something that you can sustainably, like, eat mm-hmm. maybe, right. like, a few right. times a week if you want to, you know. And, um, and, and also, yeah, touching on the sustainability, another challenge that I've had is, like, it's one thing... It's one thing to like sort of like be home where you can control all of the ingredients, but like yeah, I think another sure. like the, the one of the challenges that I think most people have is like traveling. like how do you do it when traveling and at work? Because when you're at work, it's like you know you, most places like you only get like one hour, right? And yeah. like most people don't make their lunch, so so the big challenge is like how like like you just have to eat um, so many times. You're just in a situation like you're hungry, right? Yeah. You can't think, you can't concentrate, but like it's like um, you where don't do you, have much of a go, choice. What you well, do. I agree. Like, like yeah. the only place that's open, like let's say nearby, within the hour that you get for your lunch, is right. like like the burger place, right? So it's like then we work on bringing our own lunch. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a big part of your 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 program? Is like uh like let's say meal prepping. My okay. The first thing is having a blood sugar stabilizing breakfast because we don't want lunch to be an emergency. Mm-hmm. So if you have a stabilizing breakfast, mm-hmm. which I really like if people like and enjoy and want to eat eggs, I feel like eggs are a really good way to start your day. Like top notch, eggs. top notch, mm-hmm. best way because they are full of fat and protein and they're satisfying and you can, you know, have them, you know, uh, and the good fat too. Yeah. Avocado right. toast with eggs or eggs with uh-huh. avocado or I'm really big on avocado and eggs in the morning because it just keeps you stable. And even if you're hungry, it's not an emergency hungry uh-huh. because your blood sugar has nowhere to go. It can't spike when you're having like eggs and avocado. There's no spike that's going to happen. Right. So start with a really solid breakfast. And then, yes, I work with my clients on like strategies. Mm-hmm. Generally, it's probably better to bring your lunch, but if you happen to go out i feel like most places i mean you're you're right the burger place probably doesn't have a super great option so probably better to bring your lunch if that's your only option um but most places i feel like you can find something that's pretty healthy Mm -hmm. on the menu i always do i generally get a salad because i enjoy like i personally enjoy salads like i prefer to eat those over other things it's just like what i like um and I feel like a lot of times I sort of invent my own food. So, but you can take a salad, you get a burger and have them put it on a salad. Like yeah, that's, that's actually what I did. super tasty. So uh, good. It's so good. Like a burger yeah. salad is so 
freaking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> or cheese. I would get cheese steaks without the bread and have yeah. them put it on like cheese steak salad. Heck yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. I was at Everybody's the other day and I got their vegan nachos and had them put the whole thing on a salad. Minus, oh, yeah. the, minus the chips. But everything yeah. else on the salad. It was like a big taco salad. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you can, you can eat pretty healthy at most places. You kind of just got to get into the mentality of getting away. I really try to get get people to like break away from the bread because our culture has like bread wrapped around everything right it's the vehicle for whatever's inside Mm -hmm. but that is not doing anything for our health it's probably i think that's one of my downfalls because like bread is so ingrained in our society where like it's it's almost like for for me it's almost to the point where like i don't think it was i don't sometimes it's not like it's not a real meal because i didn't have any bread right that's how ingrained it is mentally yeah, and it, wheat is very, very addicting, and our bodies, like, really crave it, and it's hard really? to kind of bust away from it, yeah. But that's what I generally try to work with my clients on at yeah. first, because, like, pretty much everything is, like, wrapped in a tortilla, or yeah. put on pizza, or, like, in a bun, or on pasta, and it's all white flour. And white flour yeah. spikes our blood sugar faster than any other substance on this earth. Like, more than sugar. It but spikes our blood... Like, the particles in white flour are smaller than the particles in sugar. They go into our bloodstream faster and spike our blood sugar faster than anything else. Wow. And we're super, super addicted to it because it is delicious and it's really hard to say no to. And it has, like, this mouthfeel that you can't get from gluten-free products. Like, they're... Well, these, these, not... these, these companies have had, like millions if not billions of dollars of research into making sure that you eat more bread yes and all the product like all the um processed stuff has like made it in a lab i think i saw this documentary where where people were like um not people were like but it, it went into like think about like these mega corporations like they have poured so much money into making sure like so like a can of pringles like yeah they know they have the exact science to make sure that you don't stop at just like one or two chips i like you will eat that entire bag yeah like like you know like i i broke down and i bought a bag of barbecue chips a couple months ago and before you know it yeah just just told myself i'm just gonna have one just driving in my car and my hand just kept reaching over there yeah, and then it's really, yeah. and then this is, and it's really interesting the psychology, at least for myself, that it's like okay, so that so the, so like, you're sitting there eating it, and then like, and then you're just like, you know what, why stop now? And then right. like the last, thir- rationalization. yeah, the rationalization, and then the last third of the bag, it's like my rationalization was like, I might as well just finish it. Yeah, you know, like, totally. So I think that's very common. I mean, for sure. That's how I was with drinking, too. You know, before I quit, you just kind of, you get stuck in the habit of, like, well... You rationalize. Yeah. yeah a lot and of rationalizing. Th- yeah, then you're just kind of on autopilot. And this is something that was huge for me to kind of change, is you can do it with food or, like, just a lifestyle change. Right. Is changing your identity mm-hmm. and, like, the way you talk to yourself in your head. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like if you tell yourself repeatedly, like I am not a drinker, or I am a he- like I eat healthy, not like I like or a butt there, like uh-huh. you're like I am this, and you tell yourself like I eat healthy, I do this, like I work out in whatever capacity, and like you will start to become that. And it sounds so silly, but it is was the most powerful driving mm. force for me. And you'll find that, like, you start to make choices based on the narrative that you tell yourself in your head Mm -hmm. so that then you might not reach for that bag of chips because you're like, I eat healthy. Why would I do that? Like, Mm -hmm. I want veggies instead. Mm -hmm. I also think it's a little bit of an act of rebellion against our, these giant corporate conglomerates that are, like, making so much money off of us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Just, like, I'm sorry, I don't purchase any of that Mm -hmm. stuff because... I don't do that. (laughs) It's just, like... Mm -hmm. I mean, once in a while, it's totally fine, but just mm-hmm. these companies are yeah, not they're, looking they're, out for our health. Like, no one out there is looking out for our health. Like, we have to be total That is a very true statement. Ourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Nobody's going to care nobody, about your health except for you. Nobody cares. Because, because our society is built on basically separating you from your money. Yeah. <laughs> and they know that what your body craves is salt, sugar, and fat. fat. In fun combinations. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Fun, unnatural combination. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, 
Well, um, you know, I I com I completely forgot to ask. Like, so this is gonna be kind of backing up to the beginning, but like you mentioned that you originally came from California. I actually grew up in Corvallis. You grew I, up in Corvallis. I moved to California me. and I met my husband. We were twenty, and when I met my husband, and we got married five months later <laughs> in California. Okay, where in California? Uh, Orange County. Okay. He okay. he he's from there. He grew up there. Okay. And okay. We lived there for like eight years, and then we moved out into Oregon and have never gone back. <laughs> nice. I take it. I yeah. I take it. The air is a little bit cleaner. I've I've never lived in L.A. or anything, but yeah, it's a little cleaner. <laughs> it's, it's a little better. Yes. Um. So. Um. Uh. Now what? Um. What What are your favorite sort of like restaurants? To eat here locally i mostly cook all of our own food we probably go out once every week or so mm -hmm. once or twice or once once or twice a month mm -hmm. um can i say moco because it's in Mosier. yeah that's fine yeah <laughs> i like Mo is... Mosier company have you been there no okay it's it's the only restaurant in Mosier because Mosier has 400 people <laughs> In the city limits. Um, it's great food, though. They have really good food, mm -hmm. which is great. So this is the only place to go. It's kind of like the mm. local watering hole. So do you, do you have do you have a dish that you recommend at that place? They currently have a beet salad that's actually very good. Really? Yeah, it's pretty, really? it's pretty big. I'm, I judge restaurants oh. by their salads and how big they yeah. are. And most restaurants have real measly, like... Yeah. Like, oh, we have to put a salad on the menu. They always put, like, a Caesar salad on the menu. I, never, I yeah. don't ever get those, but <clears throat> it's kind of like an afterthought. I've actually considered being a salad. I want to be like a salad consultant and help restaurants <laughs> have salads that are like <laughs> substantial and tasty. Right. Because like I always want a salad. I'm sure there's other people out there that would prefer to have a salad. And like mm -hmm. usually they're, like I said, they're afterthoughts. They're like, oh, we got to put one on the menu. So here's this, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. I like Remedy Cafe, which is a kind of like a little health food joint. Right. Um, uh, sushi Okalani. Mm hmm We do like the Truffle Shuffle at Double Mountain. And I had another one on my list, but I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what the other one was. It's like hmm. four. But we don't go out in the Hood River a whole, a whole lot. No, but those, those are good starting points for somebody. Yeah. Like. Well, Double Mountain's pizza well, is yeah, the I, best. Well, yeah. But if you are going to have a pizza... I, if you yeah. are going to have a pizza, which I recommend, <laughs> and I wanted to go back to the dessert thing, too, because people are actually very, probably surprised to hear this, but I do actually recommend, like, having dessert once a week, like, or any, any like, period of time that works well for you, but I prefer to have, like, mm -hmm. a good dessert every week. Like, I usually mm -hmm. get, like, yeah. local fruit, I'll make, like, a crisp and get, like, real ice cream. Mm -hmm. I do plant-based ice cream, um, and, like, enjoy it. And love it. Mm -hmm. I like this. This is really freaking good. Hmm. So I love having dessert. I like usually make something once a week. Um, and the other workaround I have for that is this is my 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 latest workaround is if you puree ban bananas and put oats in them, it put and you cook them like cookies. They actually hold together. And you oh, can really? put like a few yeah. chocolate chips in there, and it's sort of like an oatmeal cookie. It's like a healthy version of an oatmeal cookie, but it works as like a sweet thing after a meal. Yeah, Wait, I, that's my other hack. I agree. I like the having dessert. Like it is. I feel like that's sustainable. Yeah. Um, but if you're trying, like me, where you every single day, or like also had a sugar addiction that you're kind of maybe totally. slowly trying to yeah. break out to, then I feel mm. like it's important to have like work the around other. Every day. I agree. Yeah, a I work totally around. Agree. Yeah. Until you get to a place where you're like, okay, I'm doing good. I feel mm -hmm. confident. Like, I'm yeah. making healthy choices. I'm going to have that dessert and not fall into a binge cycle. Like, mm -hmm. that doesn't even cross my mind. Really? That's anymore, awesome. You know? Um, I think that's probably the spot that you would want people to get at, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, found, I remember my other restaurants. Kickstand. Kickstand oh, yeah. has great food. They oh, do. they do. And yeah. we just went to Love and Hominy Tacos the other day for the oh, first time. Oh, they're so great. We got nachos and they were so good. Is that the, that's a new taco place the new down ta right yeah, across from Andrew's Pizza? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, I just it's, ate there Saturday night too and their tacos are so good. I didn't have tacos. We got nachos. They were like the size, oh, yeah. they were like a baking pan sheet, baking wow. sheet of nachos. They were so good. Oh, yeah. They're so, so good. 
I've had those too. They're great. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think I've had one taco from there, but I'm gonna have. I really want to try the other stuff. Yeah. From there. I'm gonna go. There. I'm gonna go back there. Those They're, are really nice tacos. The bathroom wallpaper in that place is like. I walked in. I'm like, okay, this place is awesome. <laughs> so if you go to Eleven Harmony <laughs> Tacos, check out the bathroom wallpaper. It's like the best thing I've ever seen. I'll, I'll leave that to the imagination <laughs> until I get there. Yeah, it's really <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, um, uh, real quick, is is um, are there are there uh, a few anybody you want to give a shout out to before, or any 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 parting last words, words? Any of parting, words? parting words or anything else you want to get out there? Um, I think we if you if you live in Hood River or if you're visiting in Hood visiting Hood River, we live in or you're experiencing one of the pretty much most beautiful places on the earth. I think I it's think so pretty too. Pretty freaking yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. to yeah. live here and like have this drive every day. Like it's like, how do I live here? This is so cool. Yeah, but get out and enjoy it, which I'm sure most people are doing that. But yeah, totally. totally. Get outside. And uh, where where can somebody go if they want more information on on yourself? Um, Instagram. I'm pretty active on Instagram. I'm at Susanna Lapointe Coaching, and it's Lapointe without an e. Okay. Uh, Facebook, Susanna LaPointe Coaching. Okay. I have a website, www.susannalapointe.com. And feel free to email me or text and, me or say hello at any time. Send me a DM on or, Instagram. Or, or, or um, if it makes, uh, in case you can't, for some reason you can't find her there, you can just reach out to us at Discover Hood River and we can, we can get you in contact with her too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. we'll link your profile in our post as well for people to just hop yeah. right in there and check you out. Yeah, yeah. And I think my my parting words I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, Ashlyn for oh, yeah. introducing us at the entrepreneur meeting. Thanks, Ashlyn. Yeah, and um, I'm I fully expect to have her on at some point too. Yeah, so, so she's, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. And um, well, and uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming in. Uh, so, and I'm sorry, I. I I apologize. I didn't properly introduce uh, Samantha again. Just like a mystery the... woman. Yeah, I'm sorry, the but, but Samantha has Surprise. been on the podcast before, but but she's joining. Identity us again. revealed at the end. I, I know. I'm... No, it's okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I've uh, Samantha Parson, and uh, I do the writing, or will be doing more writing for the mm-hmm. Discoverhood River Instagram page and website. Had a yep. really crazy, chaotic uh, past few months since I took it over that made it hard yeah. to get started on yeah. that. But we're I gonna know. we're getting started again, guys. So yeah. Be ready. Yeah. I know I know we, we didn't get to get into it, but I think um, like we can all agree that like um, like we I think I've talked to both of you that like like um, like the the unfortunate events in life happen in like clusters. Yes, you know? for sure. And mm-hmm. and that's like threes. Yeah, threes. threes. Yeah, yeah. Mine's at like so, six or seven now. I'm threes. like, yeah. Gee whiz. Yeah, Murphy's yeah. laws never ending yeah. sometimes, but yeah. So, know. so just a little um, note to the to the listener: like, if you're going through a hard time, just uh, keep going. You know, you know, you're not the only one. Like, we everything all our... is temporary. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everything. Everything's yeah. temporary. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of a crazy. Thing I think. To... I think we all we all have our mountains to climb. For sure. You know, yeah, and. For sure. So yeah, definitely. If you if you want to reach out to any of us, um, yeah, just uh, send us a message either on, either on Instagram or um, just um, if, as far as Discoverhood River, it's Discoverhood River at gmail dot com. Um, and yeah, um, I want to thank thank you all for listening, and um, hope to be back um, within a week or two with another another episode. So any um any 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 last words? No, Susan? thanks for listening, and uh, have a great day. And Samantha? Uh, I just want to thank Susanna for yeah coming Definitely. on and chatting Absolutely. with us. Definitely. To go yeah. at the end, yeah, if you are going through a, a rough time and yeah. you know, kind of find yourself that you can't get out of it with eating or yeah. exercise or whatever. Yeah. Check yeah. out Susanna. Yeah. Great yeah. time to get coached. I'm, I'm a great support. You. I'm a great support. Reach yeah. out to Susanna. Uh, she, can, she can help you through the, um, I guess, like the mental aspects of whatever you're going through and yeah. get you on the path to wellness. Absolutely. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for listening.